three times the trouble. Here's your look at the Hasbro Marvel Legends House of X Tri Sentinel. Before we get a good gander at the Tri-Sentinel, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the Build-A-Figure Tri-Sentinel actually stands. You know, speaking of standing, despite my earlier concerns, the figure seems to stand fine. Although I would definitely recommend if you wanted both this outside just the norm of having it standing there and doing something a little bit more creative with its posing, definitely would recommend using a display stand. That's what I did at the beginning. But nonetheless, though, we're going to take the tape measure right to not its heads, but instead the part of its torso right above that, because that is the highest point after all. Stopping right there. According to the tape measure of mine, the figure stands 8.6 inches in height, so it's pretty tall. Switching that to centimeters, the Tri-Sentinel stands 21.8 centimeters tall. Let's bring in a whole slew of figures that we can compare Tri-Sentinel with, and we'll bring in all the figures we looked at from the Tri-Sentinel wave. Starting first with Moira McTaggart. Let's also bring in Omega Sentinel. Some of these may have more difficult standing times than others. We can also bring in Charles Xavier. Bring in Cyclops. Cyclops would be the one I'd be most worried about, just because he's got tiny little feet. I keep joking about his tiny little feet. Get the figure to stand. There we go. Bring in Marvel Girl who I thought would be the biggest difficult figure to stand, and yet she seems to have stood her ground pretty good so far. There's Wolverine. Get him to stand properly. I don't tend to contend with so many figures on in one display at one go, but kind of give you guys an idea of how much taller Tri-Sentinel is with all the other figures that we've looked at from this entire wave. So getting a closer look at the Tri-Sentinel, again, I was really surprised to see that it was standing because I was having some real serious time with its legs, specifically this leg right here. I'll talk about a little bit more on that in a second. But in case you are curious, because one of the problems I had with some of these earlier figures that we looked at from this wave was difficulty with getting the, the appropriate peg hole of a display stand into the hole on the bottom of its feet. And yet, for Tri-Sentinel, having a look at the figure right now, it does have peg holes on the undersides of his feet. If you did want to use yourself a display stand, I sort of blast me using a McFarlane display stand for a competing company, but you can actually take a peg like this, for example, and plug it in underneath Tri-Sentinel's feet. And it does serve as an extra support to get the figure from not falling over. And again, if you want to have it in a walking pose or a little bit more interesting of enough pose than just what I'm doing here with this very, very, very basic vanilla stand. But then, yeah, you can go ahead and use a display stand from another company. Just again, strange that Marvel Legends, as far as I know, has never really included display stands. It's not one of the things they've really pushed with the line. And yet so often people buy these figures with the intended plan of putting them in a little more interesting poses than, like I said, you're simply seeing right now. Strange, the fact that they don't include these. Anyways, we can go ahead and take the stand off. So again, if you're curious, you can use other display stands, at least for Tri-Sentinel. This specific foot really is the culprit right here. I don't really know what's wrong with it, but it doesn't seem to want to level be leveled flat. This one foot is fine. I guess one of the big issues, even though we're jumping ahead of time and looking at the posability on the figure, is it, when you look at the hinge joints here, it doesn't give you really a whole lot to work with. I mean, yeah, you can move the feet back and forth, and that's fine and good. But really, the one thing I want it to be is stabilized enough that you can get the figure to stand properly. And again, this one foot right here, I just can't get it to properly be flat. And again, there's really not much to work with. You can see right there. But we're going to talk about that more so when you have a look at the post Billy on the figure. Getting a closer look at its three heads, you can see that they're pretty much the exact same head. In fact, they are all the same mold. Eventually, I did persevere and I was managed able to finally get all those pegs attached, as you can see, to the base of its head or its torso. Still, again, looking at this, I kind of jokingly said this earlier into these reviews, but it reminds me of Transformers Prime Starscream, just the sleek nature of its body. Definitely not true Starscream colors, more closer to kind of a, like a pearlesque pink where you can really sort of see something I talked about earlier, the marbling that they did for the plastic, just the kind of mixing of the plastics. Usually I think marbling is the result of mixing many different types of plastic together. You definitely know right away when you're picking up a Marvel Legends that the type of plastic that they use is not, I don't want to say more softer. I mean, it really is a softer plastic, but it does have a telltale sign. And usually you can see when looking at it that it's a Hasbro type of plastic, if that makes any sense. 
Anyways, though, the head sculpts are really good. Each one of them are posable, so there are ball joints, so you can move these heads back and forth, up and down, and they all have their own independent ball joints with all of the heads. So that allows you then to have one head on this side, one head swaying off to this side, and then one head dead set right in the center. The only thing I would really say, it's just an old personal nitpick of mine, is the fact that it has what I would describe as retail released colors. In that, in, in that sense, they don't have a lot of additional paint applications. If you see the Tri-Sentinel in the comics, it has a lot of these vibrant pink lights shining up, especially right here, and especially in the areas of the neck. And as you can clearly see here, they've just left that all off, just instead going with the coloring of the black plastic. Now, I probably could go in there with a paintbrush, very small paintbrush, and a little bit of pink paint. I probably could mimic that, but I really feel like that should have been in there. I feel build of figures, if anything, is the time that a company should invest more of a budget into it. Because really, this is the figure that you're collecting all these figures with the intended plan of finally finishing it. You really want the figure to be a wow figure. And I feel like the wow is definitely in the sense that it's got an interesting sculpt to it. And the wow is the fact it does have the three heads. But the wow doesn't come into play when it comes with the lack of paint. Because I really feel like, again, there's an opportunity there that they completely missed. As for the rest of the body, again, you, you're dealing with all this real shiny plastic. Some of the coloring does distort a little bit, and it's just more so due to the, the molding of it. But the sculpting of the body is really good on this. You've got some nice silver incorporated here to the arms. Of course, the mid-torso, some additional black added in there as well. And of course, the way that we assembled the legs, we matched up colors. We're smart like that. So the silver one on the outside, that purple-violet-pink color kind of was on the inside there as well. A very skinny leg, very skinny build character. Really interesting. I really have always liked a big fan of design. And Tri-Sentinel has made appearances. This isn't the first time. I would love to see like a vintage Tri-Sentinel be released as a build -a figure That would definitely be fun. But this is definitely a more modern take, a little more of a futuristic take, I suppose, on the Tri-Sentinel. Again, all of this is really just molded plastic. They really didn't have to do a whole lot to this. Sure, they added then the silver, they added the silver in the arms and all the things I already talked about. But a lot of this is literally just the mold of the plastic that they've used here. For the articulation on the Tri-Sentinel, as we've already kind of discussed already, the head does move back and forth. Well, three heads all basically work the exact same way. You've got a ball joint at the base of the neck. You can see right there. That allows the head to move up, down, back, and forth. And then each one of the heads also has its own independent articulation. I think that's a real scary looking head sculpt on all three of them. Again, all the same to one another. The upper torso is on a ball joint. Uh, the lower torso doesn't seem to be. It seems that, like it's just all one sculpted piece. But the arms hinge out. Not much, mind you, though. I find like the arms are really stubborn on this figure. You can move it back fine and good but I can't seem to hinge them out very well. They're really, really tight. That's to the extent I feel I can actually get it, just a 45 degree angle. That's a bit disappointing. There's a ratcheted joint, or just a single hinge, I shouldn't say, in the elbow there. You can also rotate the arm back and forth this way, and you can also rotate these big, giant, mauling hands. I think these are menacing. You can rotate these all the way around. I feel like in the comics, like this area here is painted in, in pink. Again, there's a lot of areas on this figure that have been missed opportunities by Hasbro by not just adding the additional paint where it needed to be. Then for the legs, the legs split out. Not fully a full split, but well, I guess enough of a split. You can move the legs forward and back this way. A swivel three quarters of the way up the thigh. A single hinge knee, but quite a considerable hinge really when you look at it. Um, again, there's no articulation here because all the articulation is in the thigh. And when it comes to his feet, its feet, you can move it back and forth this way, and you can also rock it back and forth. Again, I was really surprised once everything was put together and ready to go that I didn't have difficulty getting this to stand. Though now I've jinxed myself by saying that. Definitely, I would encourage you guys, if you do look to pick this figure up for yourself, it's an interesting enough looking figure. Um, definitely make use of a display stand. So again, you know what? I might even just do that right now for the end of this review. Plug that into place. Guarantee that the figure, hopefully, hopefully knock on wood, doesn't fall over on me. Um, it's going to be probably one of those figures that I think long term, the longer I have this in my collection, I'm probably going to start noticing developing issues with its legs. It sort of has one of those types of uh, hinges on the legs. And just by the nature of the fact that the top torso is a lot broader than the lower half, I feel like it's probably going to start developing loose legs over time. In the meantime, I'm going to enjoy this figure because it's a really sleek look take on a Tri-Sentinel design. It did take, of course, several figures to build, total of six figures, and then, of course, Wolverine tagged along for the ride. But I'm overall happy with how the Tri-Sentinel looks. 
I just wish he had a little bit more pain application that Hasbro unfortunately just left off. I tell you, though, thank goodness it did have peg holes on the undersides of its feet, or I may have had more difficulty getting the Tri-Sentinel to stand. There's something about that one foot that's giving me still continued problems. It isn't even a case where I can just heat it up and try to soften the joint. It's not even a case of that at all. The track of that hinge just isn't great enough that you can't move the foot far enough, I feel, to get a nice stable stance. Surprisingly, it stood a lot better than I thought it would. But if you do want to put it in a little more of an interesting enough pose, I would definitely recommend using a display stand. It's unfortunate, though, I have to recommend a display stand from another company. And one of the things I continue to praise McFarlane Toys for doing is one of being the fewer companies out there that are actually providing display stands with their figures. If not for that, I probably couldn't pose it the way that you're currently seeing it right now, just due to the nature of the fact it's got a really big, large torso and skinny, scrawny little legs. I shouldn't have to really use a display stand from another company to display a figure from Hasbro. Hasbro really should be including display stands with all of their figures. And yet the current trend, the trend has always been the case that they never really throw that stuff in with their figure releases in the first place. Tricentral is a nice imposing looking character. Yes, with, of course, really very little in the way of paint applications, you can really see that marbling more so on the purple. Despite that, I guess you could really chalk it up to the fact that it's mechanized. So maybe you could even explain it by that, that, of course, the marbling would make a little bit more sense, but it still is an issue with Hasbro plastic. I don't know what it is about Hasbro. Hasbro always seems to be an issue when it comes to, like, their imperfections in the plastic that they use. Never seems to be the case when we look at other figures, but always Hasbro. You can always pinpoint that type of plastic. You pick up the figure and you're like, Hasbro made this, didn't they? And that is unfortunately the case here with Tri-Sentinel. A great looking figure, lacking a lot of paint, though. I mean, those light up things that it has in the comics, it just doesn't have that here in the figure. You probably could do it for yourself. With a little bit of paint, a little bit of time, a little bit of luck, you could paint in all those nice bright pink lights around the area of the head. I really wish it could have had that, but unfortunately they just left so much of that off the figure. Despite that, despite its difficulty with standing, it's a great looking figure to be put on display. And I'm really glad that I've actually collected and had a chance to review the entire Tri-Sentinel Wave for you, the viewing audience. For your video question for today is, what's your favorite builder figure that Marvel Legends has put out? It doesn't have to know. Well, I guess it would have to be Hasbro. What's your favorite build a figure that Hasbro has put out for their Marvel Legends line? Always like reading your comments down below. Even though technically we are now finished up, packed up for the day for the Tri-Sentinel wave, there's still going to be a ton of new Marvel Legends reviews coming back to this channel looking throughout the course of 2021. So if you are somebody that has been asking yourself, I really wish this guy would get back into Marvel Legends. I have heard your calls, your crees. I have been uh, decided for myself for a long time, really, that I want to get back into Marvel Legends. And we're doing it, going to be doing a lot more of it, like I said, throughout 2021. The key, though, is making sure that you're subscribed to this channel. The key is, of course, making sure you're hitting that bell notification. And the key is, yes, that you're coming back to this channel Monday to Friday, sometimes 12 p.m., most of the time 12 p.m. and 2 p.m., but sometimes sprinkled in there. We may even do a third video day as well. There's always new video content coming your way. So as always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do, and I'll see you guys next time.